Okay, welcome to our broadcast tonight. Uh, we have a little uh, technical problem. And uh, this is really uh, the attack of the devil. As you all know that he is the prince of the power of the air. And uh, we have to fix something. We tried twice already, pero medyo uh, wala kami nakasulod. Uh, I don't know what's the reason behind. Anyway, good evening sa tanan na itong mga membro at uh, all the friends around the country, uh, pastors and uh, members of other churches who are also following this broadcast. We welcome you tonight for another episode of our uh, Sword of, uh, you know, KGB Sword uh, Bible broadcast every night. So tonight I would like to make a little uh, acknowledgement before we go to the Lord in prayer. Okay, uh, we have uh, Charmin, Gideon, my wife, Leah May, Victor, and eight others, uh, Loni, Jacob, uh, Pastor uh, Kaguko, we have, uh, let's say, Nonoy Galliano, Phoebe, and then uh, Sister uh, Mary Ann Kagoko, Sister uh, Jane, and uh, Marian. So, mauni ang atong mga viewers sa karon. Uh, Mar uh, Marian Bartolata, Sister uh, Lorena Linda, Joby Bilizar, Roslyn de los Reyes, Misil Mondido. Uh, Pastor uh, David Davis is watching from America. Welcome, brother. Uh, brother uh, Don Don Tan. We have Sister Isra Kahigas. Sini Ili. Uh, Jovi Timkam. Esther Palapas. So we have uh, quite a few. Sister Rebecca Tinasio. And then Anabaptist Church Davao. Sister Ada Bartolata, and uh, of course my family. So welcome to our uh, uh, next episode of our broadcast here. We ask you to stay tuned and uh, be blessed by the short preaching of the Word of God. Now tonight, before we go to uh, the Lord in prayer, let me give you a, a short update. Okay, a short update about... Uh, the uh, condition of uh, the pandemic, I'm referring to COVID-19 uh, in our country. Uh, I've already mentioned that uh, yesterday, as of 10 o'clock in the evening, the whole Cebu City was put into a hard total lockdown. And uh, it's because according to them, we have, uh, you know, uh, the highest number of positive cases. So I'll show you the updates about the pandemic right now. Cities with most number of COVID-19 uh, cases, and that is of uh, June 21. So Cebu City has 4,000, it's number one. San Juan City, that's in uh, Metro Manila, 2,594. Another Metro Manila City, we have Mandaluyong, 1,827. Makati City, 1,422, where our church is located. Pasay City is 1,224. Paranaque City, 1,091. Mandawi City, here in Cebu, 1,061. City of Manila, 1,046. Quezon City used to be number two. You know, Quezon City follows Cebu City now. Uh, Quezon City is now on the last two, 986.3. Pasig City is the last, 896. This is the, you know, 10 most uh, affected cities. We did not include the uh, other, you know, we only take the 10, okay? Now, uh, another update here. 12 identified COVID-19 hotspots in Cebu City. This is in our area now, very close to my area. We have Sambagdos, 
These are all barangays, a little uh, town. Uh, Sambagdos, we have Kamputaw, that's uh, in UP area. Sambaguno, Basak San Nicolas, Mabulo, close to our church, Guadalupe, and then Lahog, close to my residence, Dolho Fatima, Tinago, Tisa, Ermita, and Tihiro. These are the uh, 12 hotspots, barangay that has most number of COVID positive cases. So, Malaysia. And no wonder that uh, we have a high total lockdown. Of course, I already mentioned that I uh, I question the uh, total uh, uh, lockdown because uh, there was no uh, you know preliminary uh, notice for people to prepare to buy their food. Babies has no milk. Mothers are complaining because they cannot go out. And uh, if we are not careful here, we might be killing more innocent people because of this lockdown. And then, of course, I mentioned that uh, this is an overkill. Why I say overkill? Because I, you know, I made a trip today. And uh, the scenes that I have seen are these. Okay, Pati Pocos Brother Junel. That's a tank used by the uh, AFP, Armed Forces of the Philippines. So uh, I was just shocked why they need to uh, spread tanks around the city. Who is the, the enemy, by the way? And the enemy is invisible. Why do you need to post a tank? Is this a scare tactics to totally control the populace or to scare us so we will just keep our mouth shut? No more freedom of speech and religion? So that's my question. And uh, we are in a full military control. Okay, these are some of their men, buses, patrol, men that are uh, has been augmented to different areas fully armed fully uniform they even have helicopters around so Malaysia, these are the scenes that uh, you can see most on a daily basis this is now the second day of or from the time that we were placed into a total hard total lockdown So, of course, I roam around this morning. Uh, yeah, I mean today. So these are big uh, six by six vehicles of the AFP. Okay. So mauna siya ang sitwasyon. And uh, as what I mentioned, that are many things that uh, will be affected. I uh, am reiterating that the lockdown should be addressed only to places that they, you know, they have the, uh, the positive cases. Why not lock down the whole Cebu where people cannot, you know, move, cannot do something? And we have been hurt for three months already. For three months, people were starving. A lot of people are sick because they cannot get a work and no work no pay and uh, means that there will be no food for the table so you cannot blame these people they cannot watch their family watching starving huh? and not do something this is a uh, overkill i ask why are the uh, rich people the middle class are still uh, roaming around Is because they have cars to go around. And then the ones that are poor, who has only one motorcycle, cannot even have their wives go with them. There's no back ride according to the protocols. Why? 
What about these rich people? They have money, they have food, and they're still roaming around in the city. They can do what they want. They can get their own passes. But what about the poor people? So we're killing the innocents. Okay? Remember, the sin of one is not the sin of all. The problem of one barangay is not supposed to be the problem of the whole country. I'm saying last or yesterday that we are killing a rat by burning the whole house. Why not just address the problem? And then you have to secure another quarantine pass. You have to go to the uh, city hall. And most poor people has no means of going there. Why? Because they have no transportation. If they have, uh, you know, they may have the money, but there's no public transportation to pay. Okay? So those are my observations. Do I hope that this will reach the uh, authorities? I have worked with the police and other agencies. And I am with you. I stand with you. I stand with our president. But I am just suggesting that maybe examine what we are doing now. We might be uh, killing more people than saving them. The logo of the police is to save and protect. But why do you put up a, a tank? Kinsama ng kaaway ni Ani na tanke digira naman ng mga gipang pagawas. Ha? Invisible enemy. Why do you need to put up a tank? And people are easy to control. It's just a matter of, you know, giving them the instruction how to do it. And then give them food. If you spend this money for more quarantine pass, which will even cost another 30 million pesos, why not give food to the people? By the way, ang unang problema nito, the root of the problem here is, we know already last December in China, it was already revealed that in China there's already virus going on, being spread. If we lock down our borders, our terminal, our airplane, airports, and seaports, last December, we would not be suffering these this cases. Chinese people came here by December and the virus is already being spread. If we have done the prevention last December, we should not come to this problem now. That's the problem. And I've been suggesting we have to act properly. But we, you know, the nation only acted March. And how many, how many months that Chinese are coming and bringing the virus here? December, January, February. Four months already. They have been spreading the virus here. So now, at the expense of the poor people, we are trying to overkill. Anyway, we'll pray. Before I go to the message tonight, we will ask the Lord to bless us. Pray for those who are starving. Pray for our members who cannot go out to buy food. Of course, they have no money. They have to go to work. But no work as of this time. So let us pray for that. That the Lord will provide. I must admit that this is the most, uh, the most dangerous and most difficult times in our ministry. Where almost three months we you know, have no budget to finance everything or our ministry here. So let us pray. Loving Father, we come into your throne of grace tonight. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, tonight for giving us this opportunity again to come boldly into that throne of grace that was said in your word to call unto you and you will answer us and show us 
great things or mighty things which we know not. Thou hast said that if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So Lord, I pray, have pity and mercy upon our country. Heal our land. But Lord, it takes a sacrifice on your people by surrendering our life, by turning our life to you instead of being busy of the things of the world. Help us, Lord, to focus our faith and our trust in you. Help us to pray uh, regularly and fervently. Help us to be a channel of blessing to those who are uh, poor and those who are in needy, O oh God, that we may, be, uh, we may be a help to them. Also, I pray for those who are suffering, particularly our members of our churches around the country, our missionaries and their members as well. Our church here in Cebu City that is now being the target of this virus, oh Lord, I do ask you to please move your hands upon this nation. Oh God, I thank you for this opportunity tonight that again we can bring this petition before you. Oh God, bless our country. Help our people that may they realize and may they will be convicted by turning themselves to you and that they will put their faith and trust in you, O Lord. Help us to genuinely acknowledge our sin and our failures and shortcomings our carelessness and our unfaithfulness. Lord, forgive us with all those sins, O Lord. This is our prayer now. Bless the message. And this is uh, for your glory and honor. We ask you to uh, be with us and be with our viewers tonight. For this I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to invite you tonight to go with me to Psalms. Chapter number 91. Psalms chapter number 91. And we will read the first uh, the first uh, 11 verses for the sake of time. Psalms 91 verse number 1 to 11. The Bible says, Say that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt, shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wicked at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Okay? Now, for the past two weeks, I've been, uh, I've started dealing with a series of lessons on Bible prophecy and the coming end time. We started from the rapture of the church and then of course the invasion of Gog and Magog to Israel. After that, the rise of the Antichrist. Of course, the rapture takes place before the rise of the Antichrist, before the start of the tribulation period. And then, uh, you know, we have the four horsemen, part of the uh, seven seals. And I've discussed everything about there. After that, we discussed the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, characteristics of the coming Antichrist. And then uh, we discussed the seven trumpets, judgment. And then we discussed the seven vials. 
the Battle of Armageddon, so to speak, for maybe around uh, maybe seven videos already that has, has covered the lesson that I have taught already. But, you know, I felt that uh, I have to give you a, a message tonight to encourage you. So, temporarily, I will not continue the series of Lesson on Prophecy because I feel there's a need of encouraging you, especially now that we are in a hard uh, total lockdown, especially here in Cebu, where people are starving, where people are suffering now. There's an ongoing panic buying. I asked Brother Junel to buy something around 3 o'clock, and he came back around 5.30 already, I mean 6.30 already, because, you know, the line is too uh, long, and... Uh, uh, there's a panic buying, according to him. Uh, of course, I saw that this morning already when I passed by to some groceries and some malls. And because people are, uh, you know, anticipating that very soon, in fact, the, the barren guys that I mentioned to you might be totally locked down. And nobody will be allowed to go out. So uh, that's why they are having a panic buying right now. So, continue to pray for us here in Cebu. And of course, let's pray for our country. Okay? So, tonight, I felt that uh, I'll uh, give you uh, some encouraging message, uh, admonition from the Word of God using Psalms 91. And the topic of uh, our sermon tonight, okay, let's check. What happened to our... Let's try it. Hindi, hindi ang uh, quad, ang remote. So ang problema niya, ang nag-quad na ni kanina. Why don't you uh, put the laptop here? Well, there's another, uh, you know, a lot of problems. Uh, if you use the PowerPoint, I'm not really uh, comfortable about this, but because I want to show the lesson that I'm teaching, so I have to use the PowerPoint. So uh, tonight, let's, uh, let's just go to our topic. Okay, this will be our topic tonight. Our internet, I think, is uh, very slow now. I don't know about in your area, but bear with me. I'll give you a short message to encourage you about this time of pandemic. My topic will be God's powerful promise of protection in the midst of pandemic. Okay? Ito po ang lesson na siya nating pag-aaralan ngayong gabi. Ang promisa, powerful promises of God and protection in the midst of pandemic. And our text, of course, is very clear on God's powerful protection and promise. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And we all know that this pestilence is now a pandemic. When we say pandemic, meaning global. It's not only happening in two or three countries, but it's happening around the world. It's a global uh, pestilence. That's why they call it pandemic. It affects all the nations of the world. First time that a virus has locked down or shut down the whole world. And of course, some has recovered already. There are nations that are now in their, uh, not really normal, but at least they are in their uh, modified quarantine, meaning uh, there's already 
a, uh, allowable uh, you know, tolerance that people can go out, malls are now starting to open, and so on and so forth. But uh, here in Cebu, we were put into an ECQ, Enhanced Community Quarantine, and then just a week, we uh, experienced the GCQ. A GCQ is a little bit, uh, you know, open, where malls are starting, few of them are starting to open. And then after a week, we are placed back to a hard total lockdown, which is the worst you know, a status of our city here. So we'll talk about God's powerful promise of protection in the midst of pandemic. Tignan po natin ang sinasabi ng banal na kasulatan. Okay? Number one, the promise of safety. God has promised safety in the midst of this pandemic condition. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Here in the picture, it says the safest place is under His wings. That's the safest place in this time of pandemic, in this time of total chaos and uh, sickness and problems. The only place, the only safest place is under the wings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you get out from the wings of God, huh? when you get away from that protection of God, then you have no protection. You are vulnerable to any virus, you are vulnerable to any attacks or sickness. And that's why we need to be under His wings. We need to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So that's the promise of safety. Number two, not only the promise of safety, but the second promise is the promise of shelter. The promise of shelter. Look at verse number three. It says here, surely, uh, uh, verse number two, I'm sorry, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. So David is saying here that the, uh, the only place where shelter is available when storms of life and problems will attack us and will boast us, then there is a place that is called God being our refuge and our fortress. So that's the second promise of God. I know all of us are suffering today. That's the reason I want to encourage myself. This preaching is also for my own. This preaching is also to encourage me and to inspire me. Because to be honest, I'm very tired of you know, facing all these problems for three months. Uh, aside from my family, aside from my missionary, aside from the church, finances and everything, I've been tired. I've been exhausted. And I must admit, that only shows that we're human. Uh, tao lang ta. There are times that I would like to quit. Uh, but thank God, God, always reminded me that He is our refuge and fortress. My God in Him will I trust. The promise of shelter. As long as God is there and He is, He will always stay there. He will always be on the throne. Thank God for the, you know, uh, unchangeable attributes of God. He will stay in the throne. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And thank God we're serving a God that is unchangeable. He is our refuge and fortress. You may be, you know, down today. You may be weary and you may be, you know, feeling discouraged. Uh, every one of us many times are discouraged because of the problem. And you cannot blame the poor people who 
will do everything to just feed their family. Their only intention, they are not going around like this middle class and rich people who are just, you know, uh, going around for pleasure. They are trying to look for the food for their family. And now they are being singularized. They are being, uh, uh, you know, uh, blamed for this COVID. When the truth of the matter, we have to understand that they are suffering physically. They're starving to death. So that's the second promise of God. The third promise is found in verse number 3. He said, Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. In the Bible, the fowler here refers to Satan. And as the fowler, he has a snare. You know, a, a fowler has a snare to catch his prey. Like a spider, he has a web. Para makatch niya, he can catch the prey. And any little insect that will pass through that web of the spider are catch. That's the snare. The devil has many snare. He has a lot of traps to, you know, destroy you. And that's why we have to be very careful. And if we do not trust in the Lord, we do not depend on God, we will be, uh, we will fall into His snare. We will fall into His trap. And that's why it is very important to really put our faith in the Lord. What's the promise? In spite of the fowler that has a snare, in fact, the Bible says here, in verse number 6, Nor for the pestilence, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. So the pestilence is going around looking for a prey, looking for a victim. Of course, because of the, the, the kind of virus that we have, most people that will be affected by this virus are those people who are poor. Their immune system is very weak. Uh, they have problem on their lungs and their heart because they are under malnutrition. That's why you can find that 90% of the victims of the COVID, the casualties are the poor people. And uh, it's very hard. It's very hard. It's really sad on their condition. So here we have the promise of sensibility. That means that God will give us the sense to, uh, you know, to uh, discern what's going on. We have to be very discerning. We have to be very sensible. God will give us that sensibility that we will not be careless of doing things not according to the will of God. Kaya nag tayo. Now, I'm already 64. And since March until now, I have been going out uh, just lately, I started to limit my going out because I have no more budget to bring to the members. I've got uh, my uh, few budget before, so I have to go out every day and bring how many weeks I've been roaming around, going back and forth to your homes, just bringing those relief goods. Thank God for our brethren that supported me and that support was used to buy those rice and canned goods, everything. And most of you has, you know, received those. But just maybe two weeks ago to the present, I started to limit my going out. When I go out, I just go to maybe buy some medicine for me. But thank God we have to be very, very discerning. God gave us the sense, the spirit of discernment. To be sensible. Let's not be curious. A cure, uh, I mean uh, careless. We have to be very careful on our decision. If it's not important, don't go out. If it's not really mandatory for you to buy something, go outside then stay home. Because uh, this virus is no respecter of person. Number next. Look at verse number Number four, 
He said, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. The promise of shield. You know, when you put your life in God and you let God, you know, hold you and keep you, then there is a promise of shield. God will shield you. God will put a wall of protection upon you that no virus could attack, no virus could get into you because the shield of God is there. And that's the blessing of being a Christian. Why are, there are these people are victimized by this virus because they are careless. They just, uh, you know, some of them even challenge, well, I'm, uh, I'm in good health. So what? Well, look at what happened. Right now, we are one of the most, uh, you know, uh, number of positive cases here in Cebu City. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His throat shall be thy shield and thy buckler. The throat refers there is the word of God. We should keep trusting the word of God. This is our buckler. This is our shield. The word of God is our shield. Uh, you know, go there on Ephesians chapter number 6. Paul said, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And he keep telling about enumerating all the all the different armors, the of faith, the breastplate, and so on and so forth. That's why we have to have a shield. And only God can put and can give us the shield, my dear beloved. This is our shield, and we have to trust God on this, and also God will shield us with His powerful hands. Okay? So that's the fourth promise of God to our life amid pandemic. Sa panahon ng pandemic na ito, may mga promisa ang Panginoon na kung magsalib lang ta, if we will only trust in the Lord, and if we will only put our faith in Him and really, you know, lean upon Him, God has promised about this powerful protection that nobody, no one, even the pandemic cannot attack us. Although there will be hardship, there will be sufferings in our ministry, physically, spiritually, and financially. But thank God, He is there. He will provide our needs by the grace of God. This is the reason why I want to preach this sermon because I needed this myself. Next, the fifth promise is the promise of sustenance. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Satan has many arrows. Huh? He used it to distract you, to discourage you, to defeat you, to destroy you, etc. But thank God, we have God as our sustaining grace. He will continue to sustain us and protect us from the arrow that flyeth by day. They will not come to us because God will protect us. God will shield us and will sustain us during this time of problem. I told my uh, my friends in America that my number one need right now is prayer. Uh, number one need is prayer. And some of them has responded, Brother, you are in our prayers. Thank God that there are people who are praying for us. If it's not of the prayer of God's people, I do not know. Unsa nakaha ang ato nga kinabuhi. So mauna, mga itsuon ko, the promise, the fifth promise is the promise of sustenance. Now, ano pang sinabi niya? The next promise is the promise of satisfaction. Anong ingon din sa verse number uh, 6? Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noon day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. 
What a promise of the Lord. Ha? Biro mong promisa ng Panginoon ng Christians nga ni. They are walking by night. They are walking by day. Every time they are there spreading around and we pass through these places here. The devil are surrounding this. He is the God of this world according to the Bible. And that's why thank God God has promised satisfaction regardless of the pestilence that walk it by day and walk it by night according to the word of God, yet it will not come nigh thee because God has promised to satisfy us. Praise the Lord for that. No isang pestilence. On saning no isang pestilence, makalilisang. Makalilisang ang mga pestilence, ng mga sakit. Ilabihan ka na especially that people will post so much uh, you know negative things that really scared people and put people into panic that's why i advise you don't go with these people who always post some negative things like how many people died or uh, you know what happened to these doctors and this and that it makes you uh, you know uh, it frightens you it makes you uh, panic because Oon sa na lang ni, wala nang girispito kining mga kuwan nga ni. Daghan ang mga nangamatay ni ani. Nga, the truth of the matter, not all of those casualties are COVID, you know, cases. In fact, according to what I've read, uh, it's already a protocol. When somebody, uh, when somebody are admitted to the hospital, automatic, the protocol is declared to be COVID. That's an information that I have heard from other doctor. You see? Automatic protocol na na. Nga COVID na dayo na. Ha? Kay daghan pa man ang mga kwandiya, kung dili mo na i-declara COVID, anong mangyari? Di wala. Walang uh, kwan, walang makuha nga beneficyo. So kung i-COVID mo, at least sigurado ang hospital, mabayaran ng PhilHealth, mabayaran ng gobyerno, ng DOH, on sa panang may mga Ibaya diha, labi na kung mamatay na, milyon pala na. O, oh, ito may komisyon pa. Daghan baya, there are many politicians who became rich, millionaire because of this pandemic. Ha? So, maunang problema mga egsoon. Another one. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling according to these birds. So, wala daw maka- Uh, lusot na mga evil walang maka uh, palapit sa imong dwelling place walang plague ang plague po ay mga not only just the pestilence not only just the virus but any kinds of plagues that is now you know uh, very rampant in our in our country today daghan ang mga plagues na moabot no but ang promise ng Ginoo is the promise of stability the promise of stability You will stay stable. You will remain stable regardless of this evil that will befall you. Neither any plague that will come to your dwelling. Oh, I remember the people of Egypt. The, I mean the people of God in Egypt. Where, you know, uh, when God, uh, you know, allowed uh, uh, you know, to uh, affect the uh, Egyptians, while the uh, Jews are very close on their area and they were not, you know, they were not hurt. They were not affected of the pestilence. Ang duol lang nila. So I believe, mga itsuon ko, if we trust in the Lord, this is what I believe, God, even though you are, you have a neighbor that is already, you know, positive, as long as you put your trust in God and you believe in God, you rely upon the Lord, you claim the promise of God Uh, even though isa ka meter lang na ang ang uh, kwandiha wala dili ka pwede matakdan nga naman tungod kay may promise ang Ginoo na you will stay stable you will remain stable that plague will not come to your dwelling hindi makaabot sa imong gipuyan but of course many times we are we are overconfident sometimes we are careless that's why the the message tonight is to encourage you and to inspire you to be very careful at the same time use wisdom at the same time you have to put your trust in the Lord lean not unto your own understanding 
trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So that's the promise of stability. And the last one, and we will close after this. He shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. The last promise of God in this text that we have tonight is the promise of security. Security. Mayroon kang mag-secure ka nimo. There's somebody that God will send to secure you, to help you, to protect you. Aside, of course, from the, you know, all power of God, but He will send His angel. He said, He shall give His angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Wa ba mo kabalo nga may mga ministering spirits kita? According to the book of Hebrews, we have ministering spirits. Unsa na? Mga angels na nagagard ka na to. More or less, wala mang yun ta exact diri nga numero, but the number of witnesses must be two. At least siguro wala duda ang matag Kristohanon may duwa ka angel nga kanunay nagabantay na to. At magbantay ta, mag-discern po ta. Minsan, there are times nga maka, mahibong ta nga nung wak ta na ligsan nga dool naman unta ta na ligsan, gitabangan ta sa atong anghel. Ha? May mga naan ang may tabo, ha? and din mahibong ka na lang, wala na unsa ka, ang angel, nagtabang ni mo. Kaya ayaw pataka, Naana sila kanunay diya nag-atang ni mo. Ang problema diha paggahi kag ulo. Ha? Pukawon ka sa Domingo para mo simba. Wala. Or mo simba ka man pero wala ka gapaminaw sa mensahe ang imong uh, ang imong angel diha nagaingon oy paminaw. Uh, may naan ang mensahe para sa imo ikaw sige paghuy ab sa simbahan unsa may tabo. Minsan biyaan ka ng angel mo. Ha? May panahon nga na ang, ang ginoo instead nga tabangan niya ang nation of Israel in the book of Psalms, ha? 106, chapter 106, na-preach ko na ni, I have preached this message before, God sent an evil angel to the nation of Israel because they have gone too far, naging hard-headed na sila, kaya ikaw, Kristohanon, kamong mga naminaw karon Ayaw din nyo ipasukha ang inyong mga angels diha nga naa kanunay nagbantay ninyo nga naa nag nagprotekta kaninyo nga nagtabang ninyo nga ilikay kamo sa dili mao andin hala wala lang kamo gyapon pagpakabana may mga times nga mo padala na sila ng wake up call nimo para unta nga dili ka maunsa nga numang daghan ang mga Kristohanon nga namamatay in spite sa tanang mga blessing and protection of God kay nga numang ginaprobok na to ang mga nagagiya na to ha? wala na ta nagpakabana sa mga ginahatag sa ginoo nga mga mugiya na to He shall give His angel charge over thee to keep thee in all not just some not just few but to keep thee in all thy ways. Therefore, you must be very discerning. Every time magmatakay nun to me, may naang nagabantay ni mo. Ayaw paglikoy, ayaw paghimog mga dautan. Ilabi na ang pagpangalagad nato sa gino. Minsan, at siguro, ang angel ni mo diya, biyaan ka na lang. Di ka mo simba, ingon sa angel siguro, okay, ako na lang mo simba. Gahi kag ulo. That's why minsan, pasagdan niya ka, muna maigo ka muna masakit, maigo ka muna mga problema, tungod kay wala ang anghel nagprotekta ninyo. Hinaot pa, na maging serious ka. God is a serious God. He means business. We can count on God. His promises are true. If there's somebody to be blamed, if we have problems, it's not God, it's, it's us. Because wala tang nagpakabana, naatanan ang iyang giingon na protection, the protection of shelter, the protection of safety, the protection of stability, 
the pro uh, protection of shield, security, and satisfaction, and then you have security here. Asa pa man ta mo ad to niya na. Nga ingon maniya maunag niya pangako din sa Samsa 91. Ang problema na anato mga igsuon ko. The problem is in us, not with God. Because we do not trust in Him. Wala ta nagsalig diha sa atong Diyos. So again, salamat. Inaot pa kini nga minsay na kahatag. O, hagit ka ninyo as I am also challenged and inspired. I need, you know, talagsalang ko maka atin, of course, dugay na, wala naging taka atin mga conferences from other churches. Uh, you know, uh, ako, ako na di, usa, mga missionaries na to, lagyo po. Uh, so, mauna nga gutom po ko, I'm uh, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry with the Word of God. That's why I have to preach to myself. Kung wala ka na panalanginan ni Ani, nasa imo na ako na panalanginan ko para ni nako. Salamat nga may mga promisa ang ginoo. Alang ka na ko in the midst of this pandemic. God has a powerful promise and protection in the midst of this pandemic. Before I close, acknowledge ko balik ang mga nagtanaw. Okay, we have uh, Jasna and then uh, Lorena. Sino you know, pa ning mga naadyare? Andy Hoover. Thank you for watching. This is I believe from America. And then uh Kai Costanilla Manila, Leah Me. Okay. So halos kanan. Halos mao na ning ako na mention kanina. May the Lord bless you. Take the message and claim the promise of God. Do not fear. Do not panic. Minsan, mas magtuo pa ta. Many times, we just put our faith on this. Yun know, ang mga false news. Claim the promise of the Lord. And we will not be a victim of this pandemic. We have to face the fact that the, the virus is now spreading around the city of Cebu. And it's just a matter of time who will be the next victim. But thank God, the Lord has promised of safety, of shelter, of stability, and of shield, security, and satisfaction, and sensibility, and sustenance. And uh, nothing will happen to us without the approval of God. So praise the Lord. This is Pastor Bernales. I'm very exhausted uh, with many, many things to do in the, in uh, in today's uh, ministry. So uh, pray for me and uh, let's pray for our work. One more uh, message tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, I hope that uh, I have the strength to do it. And then, of course, on Sunday, let's get back to our ministry. Serve the Lord. I think the trumpet is about to sound. He is coming soon. God bless you tonight. My prayer for your protection. Stay safe.